it's, it's a text that keeps on giving. And that's why Shakespeare is so fantastic to do for actors, because yeah. it's, it's just limitless with possibilities. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, yeah. the greatest writer of all time. Yeah. And, and you find things every single day, every time you pick it up and look at it, and working through it, it's just been a real joy. Working with John and Dover on this is such an exciting experience. Um, they're two absolutely amazing actors. Uh, and one of the most enjoyable things is that uh, one of them is new to me and one of them is a dear friend and colleague. John and I worked together on many different shows, including Hamlet at the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. And he's one of our most extraordinary actors with a commanding physical stage presence and incredible intelligence. Dover, we all know, is the most extraordinary actress and it's the first time that we're working together. So we're very much enjoying discovering this play together. The way that it kind of came about Although I had been talking with Paul Miller about it since we did Hamlet, apparently. He tells uh, me. Apparently every six months. Uh, yeah, so one of those parts that you, obviously we're actors, we want, they're the two of the greatest parts ever written. So we were working together on a show called White Dragon, Strangers. That's right, to have no Slash idea. Strangers. Yeah. Um, playing husband and wife and found it, um, a lot of fun to work with each other. It was, we're having, it was great. And one of those things over lunch where you think, what should, you know, we should do some theatre. Because we both like doing theatre. And because I have a big mouth. And, uh, and yeah. I just said, what, what, do, what do you want to do? What do you want to, what would you, if you could do anything, what would it be? Yeah. And you've, what about Macbeth? I, oh, that would be great. So yeah, of course we thought, you know, the two greatest, it's the greatest couple in, yeah. you know, you know, history, isn't it, in, in, in theatrical, classical. Anthony and Cleopatra's not bad. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe, maybe in a Sweet couple of years. Well. So we, as a kind of joke, <laughs> joke, said, well, let's just make that known that we want to do it. You know, that would be great. No, really not, genuinely not thinking it would be taken any further. <laughs> right, right. And here we are. Yeah, now look. So be yeah. careful what you wish for in life. Quite obviously, in politics, in this country and in America and, and around the globe, there are many instances currently of people in power and we're seeing the effects of, the corrupting effects of absolute power. And so we've drawn into the room all of those sort of reference points. But the key thing about the play is that it has to stand as a metaphor for everything. You have something like 754 lines in the play. Um, Lady M has 250. Um, but they are direct and demanding and they um, there's a muscularity to the language that is just fabulously free. With this production, our designer, Simon Dore, has come up with an absolutely ins inspired design because it is both intimate and can be a kind of psychological arena, and yet it's on an epic scale. Uh, and so uh, I think it's going to be an absolutely extraordinary show in that big theatre, but it's also going to focus on these two extraordinary individuals. His writing style is very, very different. I, I, and I didn't realise that until I started to try and learn it and say it. It's the just... The poetry as a man, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the and poetry is just... he's a killer and a, and a poet at the yeah, same time. Yeah, yeah. The incredible, incredible writing. And, and uh, apparently it was because he, in that year, he stopped being an actor and he didn't have to rehearse and do plays and he just wrote. And so his, write, his, his writing became really, not flowery, but much more poetic and knotty and just different and so that hit me when, when, when I was trying to learn it.